Hey everybody, welcome back. Yeah, the VFR side stand is too short. It just leans too far. There is nothing wrong with it or where it mounts or any parts thereof to make this a problem. I'm going to show you what causes that on other bikes, but on this one, what I'm about to show you on that is not the present case. This thing is just too damn short to start with. Let's go ahead and uh, get right to it. All right, let's talk a couple of minutes here about uh, why this is the case on some bikes. Now, if some bikes actually have a twist in the frame that causes it. You know, the tubular frame types that come down and then the uh, side stand mount is welded to it. That sometimes can twist out, usually from lard asses sitting on the bike with the side stand down. And that causes this to be the case. Um, a buddy of mine's got a via uh what is it uh well, no a cb 1100 f and he's not the culprit it was the way he bought it and that is the case i had it in here a few years ago for some stuff and i wondered why it was so you know spread out you know <laughs> when the thing is on the side stand and you could actually look up behind that little um, spot there where it's welded to the frame on that bike and see it cracked and it pulled out a little bit this is not the case on this bike but the aluminum frame, there's no way it's going to twist, and it has not twisted. And that uh, body of the uh, bracket, you know, that bolts up part of the engine mount uh, assembly there, uh, is not bent either. This is just too short. The way they designed it and engineered it is too short. The other reason it can happen is if you have larger tires on it, as far as the profile goes, the height profile, that is not the case on this bike. These are stock size tires. So if you're going to do something like this, you have to look for the root cause first. Once you figure out the root cause, then you can make some corrective action or decide to pull the trigger on um, just lengthening the thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lengthen it because I just don't like it leaning over so far. It's a pain in the ass and uh, it's just not looking. It doesn't look right. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we got a center stand. And I, actually what I did was I pulled the trigger on buying another side stand. It comes with the bracket, the the uh, pivot bolt, the whole bit from Flea Bay. So if I screw this one up, we'll just put that one on. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take a look at what my ideas are, my plan. Of course, he's in the way. I forgot to mention before, I have, you know, planned this out as far as where this thing is going to land when it's longer. And you have to do this when you're working on something like this. Because I read about a guy on... Uh, a post on the VFR Facebook page that did this. He extended it by 38 millimeters, which is inch and a half. Um, I'll talk about how I'm long. I'm going to go here in a minute. But anyway, um, he said you can't do it with the stock exhaust. It has to be an aftermarket exhaust because it'll hit the exhaust. Now, this will definitely clear with an inch and a half, but I think I'm going to go an inch and a quarter because I tried an inch and a half down on the floor here with this thing in the side stand. It seems a little bit too high. But if you're going to do something like this, you have to kind of plan it out and make sure that when it folds back up it's not going to hit anything because then you may have to do other modifications you don't need to, you know you don't need to be doing that nobody needs to be doing that but in this case we're going to have no problem with inch and a quarter the only thing it'll do is it'll probably put the um end here the tang that you put your foot on to put it down when you're sitting on the bike a little bit closer underneath the foot peg but we can correct that by just adding another one on the side just a little thing like that or something off of here um, these rubber doodads, this thing's supposed to come around, and that actually might help us. Uh, this broke off, but I think the one on the Magna's side stand, which obviously isn't ever used, is the exact same thing, so I'll probably end up putting that on here later on because this is all broke off, extends up this way. So, yeah, you just want to make uh, sure you're playing on that kind of stuff. But like I said, uh, we screw it up. We'll just put the one I ordered on Flea Bay on after we paint it and call it uh, a lose, call it a fail, you know. I don't think it will fail though. Okay, so it's easy to just take the whole bracket off to get this out. So I got it out. This rubber part getting out of there was that broken piece. That was a mother. But I got it out, no problem. I need to get that out of replaced anyway, out of the way and replaced. So now we're going to make a decision on where to cut this so we can extend it. Now the best place would be in where it's thicker most likely, but then we have to move this, uh, which is the purchase for the bottom of the spring. I don't want to have to do that. So I think the only choice we're going to have is about right here. And I have a couple of ideas on how to get this P 
piece in, the, the, the uh, spacer piece, filler piece, where everything's straight. And, you know, I'm not trying to overcomplicate things. I mean, like, when do I ever do that? But, uh, you know, I think we need to make it right. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and chop this with the uh, zip saw over in the vise, and uh, then we'll take it from there. Okay, I got the four jaw in, and I have the long part of the side stand in here. This may look like a sketchy setup, and you wouldn't be wrong. But I got it pretty trued up as far as the end goes. Just put a center up to it and just bump it around between tapping it and adjusting the jaws. I got it pretty straight. This is what it looks like when she's spinning. So right there it's actually pretty true. I just need to put a center in it. We need to drill that anyway, but I'll show you what I'm going to be doing here with that. I just need to true up about a half inch of this. This is going to get welded over it anyway, so because this is kind of an oval shape, the way it was cast. This is cast steel, obviously. So, um, you know, because it's cast steel, it's probably a little harder than the normal steel that I normally work with, but high speed should cut this, and what I'm going to fill this in with is about the same grade, I'm pretty sure. So what I just need to do is I need to run this back about yay far, I'm going to take a little bit of this gusset with it, if I can, and then I'm clear of this hook here. Before we turn it on, we want to make sure that uh, on our Z-axis, we're not going to come back and hit whatever the thing is that we're not wanting to hit here. My tool is slipping. I hate it when my tool slips. One of the set screws had loosened up, and now I got three in this uh, piece of high speed, so I think we're okay. Probably should check the center line of this tool, though. So you've got a nice round spot right there. Actually, that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use the feed. Almost, I just got to clean it up. Alright, that'll work. Just took me a minute to set the steady up. I'm just having the center in here to keep it centered for the steady. This isn't really all that critical at all. It's probably not even necessary, but why not do it because it's here. I'm just going to get these just touching. All I need to do is face that off and square it off. That's all I'm doing this for. But setting this shit up is really quick. So uh, we'll leave that in there. We'll clear the spindle. Um, yeah. Easy peasy. Now we'll just face it off. Just to clean up the face. Now we're going to drill this. Maybe even ream it afterwards. I'm not sure yet. Because I'm going to put a pin in. See, if you haven't guessed what I'm going to do so far. I want some mechanical support besides just the weld. We'll do weld prep by, uh, you know, chamfering this. Even with a grinder is okay. It doesn't matter. But I want something on the inside. Either that or i got to put something on the outside. And that's not conducive for this setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill and maybe ream for a pin of some sort. I don't know if I need to even ream it, like I said. We'll, we'll stick a pin in, doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly like super driven in, like pressed. And then the other piece, the filler piece, will have holes on each side for pins or however I'm going to do that. I actually might, when I turn the um, filler piece, I'll probably build the pin into that. So when it goes into this, it'll just be that, you know. And I can do that on the other end too, the, the foot end of it. But getting ahead of myself, let's go ahead and just face this. Alright, so I'm going to make the piece, the filler piece, the inch and a quarter filler piece out of this. This is the same shit that's in the rear lower mount of the sidecar. If you watch that video, I talked about using a piece of steel that um, is from the fireplace uh, wood grate thingy that I used to have in there. This is actually one of those pieces. So um, we'll, I'll chop this down a little bit longer than inch and a quarter and face the ends. I'll put the three jaw back in for that when I get done with all this. 
and then uh, we'll probably turn the outside of it half and half because this is half inch nominal right here before I started turning it well maybe about 560 all right and it doesn't have to be you know accurate it's just rough so this was about 560 we're going to try to blend that so we'll turn this down to about five whoops about 500 thou half half an inch so the inside will make um i don't know we'll make a quarter inch uh you know what do you call it pin or maybe even three eighths make it pretty big i don't know i'm gonna kind of go by eye on that but i have to figure it out now because i gotta do a, a drilled hole so let me think about it a second Okay, actually, this is 5 eighths diameter, 625 roughly, according to Mr. Scale. So we'll turn this down to half and do a quarter inch for the pin inside of it. That'll be essentially 50% stock and 50% locating or support pin. That'll work. Six millimeter drill bit, and I got a reamer that's uh, just under 250. It's 249. I have an over and under reamer set. And it doesn't really matter what it is as long as I know where I'm at. So all we have to do is drill it and then shoot a reamer. Good enough. Perfect. Yeah, you see that the bigger side of that used to be about 560 at the end. We'll make this 560, and it only gets smaller toward the uh, foot. So um, we're at 587 or so now. So we're close. We'll make it 560, and then I don't know. What we'll do like we'll just grind the taper into it. Like I said, it's not really critical, but we'll make it on the large side. You know, it's always better when it's on the large side. That's what she said. Yes! Yes! Come on, knock it off. <laughs> eh, 65, good enough. I dressed up that tool. You see how it's pushing? Service finish is good, but the other thing about this is it cuts well, and it seems to be a little on the gummy side. This I thought this would be harder steel than mild steel. It might be medium, and that's probably what that stand is made out of. Because if it was, you know, very hard, it would tend to crack and break. They don't want side stands crack and break. This might be exactly the good stuff for it, now that I'm working with it. So I'm just going to match up this side over here. Okay, what, what I want is I want uh, from shoulder to shoulder. In other words, we're going to turn down the ends to a certain size at one and a quarter. So we need to take an equal amount off and make a shoulder at that distance from the end. So that's easy to figure out. It's 1.900 for the total length. We subtract 1.250, divide that by 2, and that comes out to 325. So 325 aside, that'll give us uh, the distance between shoulders. So we'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, I guess I'll use a little blue. Mark it off with the calipers. Do this side. We're going to bring it down to about uh, 2 um, 60 or so, I don't know, something like that. And then we'll figure out where we need to go from there. About 140 to go. Real close, we'll bring the last bit in with a file. You know, when you're doing shit like this by hand with a file, you put that chamfer on it and keep a mental note how big that was. You start filing it down, that chamfer starts to disappear. Then you got a kind of a 
a gauge measurement in your brain. See? Perfect. I just want to slip in and give us some rigidity. It's got a little bit of movement. That's okay. Yeah, see? This is what I had in mind. Now, again, I'm going to have to taper this down somehow. I don't really know how I'm going to do that, but... You know, I could work out some sort of fancy taper thing. I'm not going to deal with that. We'll just grind it in, you know, grind it in or something. We'll figure it out. But, uh, yeah, that'll work because it's about the same diameter as here. This is all going to get filled with weld. Got to do some weld prep here. Going to go ahead and chamfer this back, angle it back. This part we'll do by, by hand. Just grind it back. All right, there she is. It's 1.260, so it's 10 over. That's fine. Like I said, it's not precision. I did taper this, small end, big end. I used the uh, compound. Yeah, I know, but uh, that's me. This slips in. Oops, there you are. And uh, remember, this is that, not that, diameter-wise. And this down here is pretty close to that. So now i got to figure out how to do this on this. Got a little sloppy with this one, but it's still going to work. It's just some sort of a positive lock inside there. Let's see. You know, it's probably better anyway, so I can wiggle it around because I couldn't get that actually straight. But it actually actually looks pretty good. I trust my eye sometimes more than I do the machines, you know. Okay, this is like a carbon fiber weld mat. How this gets clocked is not like that. Uh, it doesn't go the same side as the spring, obviously. It goes on the other side. There's a flat. You can kind of barely see it right there. There's a flat there and a flat there. I'm just going to put a scale up to that and kind of eye that in. Then we'll tack it. We can tap it around um, to make sure it's straight once I tack it on both sides. It's just going to pull on one side when I tack it, and then when I go on the other side, I can kind of even that off. But as far as clocking, it goes this way because the spring's on the back side and the toe's on the front. We'll go ahead and just do this side of the extension first. It looks like it's concentrically out of round. <laughs> if that's a thing, you know, it's being influenced by the fact that it's not zeroed in on this, that's fine. I don't really care about that. The better you get an idea how it's looking. I'm going to do it right there and see if I can kind of pull it this way and up. Yeah, sure as hell lined up. All right, we'll uh, grind it back and then take a look, probably fill a little bit more in, beef it up a little bit, and then we'll come back. Alright folks, she's back on. 
I got the spring back on and just don't have the outer nut on, but it threads into there anyway, so it's no big deal. Definitely doesn't hit the exhaust like I figured. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make something to help put it down or not. I haven't figured that out yet. I might put a little tab on here. I'm not. I'm not going to do that on camera. We'll do it later. But I need this. We need to see if this actually works. See how it, see how it looks. Okay. Moment of truth. Uh, off the center. Onto the side. Oh yeah. Look at that. Now I'm liking that a lot better. See, that's great. Uh, you know, that's, that looks so much better. It really does. You know, you shouldn't have to bust your nuts trying to get it off the side stand when it's parked. Now, of course, there are going to be some parking situations where it'll be more advantageous for, you know, having a more of a lean on it. But, hell, every bike's got that when it's set up properly. You just have to learn how to park right, you know. Instead of facing the bike one way, you face it the other, you know. If you have a sloping ground or something like that. I mean, that really feels a lot better. Oh, yeah. Maybe I can do a side-by-side -side before and after. I'll see if I can do that in editing. I'm not sure if I can do it in editing or not. We'll have to figure that out. Okay, folks, she's all done. This is a couple of days later. I have the bike up here in the lift because I took it for a ride yesterday and uh, I don't like the jetting. I don't like the way it's running at about 4,500 RPM with very light throttle. It's uh, breaking up and it, to be honest with you, it's kind of anemic when you hammer it uh, just about at all throttle levels, um, you know, except for wide open and it gets pretty good once it gets up in the RPM range. So I'm in the process of rejetting. There won't be any video on that, but I just wanted to explain why the why the scene is different. So let's get back to this. Um, this worked really well. I got the piece in from the Magna that, uh, I don't even know what this thing is called, what it does. Everything clears, no problem. I used this yesterday, no problem, when I took the ride uh, and I was out and about. And the only other thing I did do, though, that I did off camera, see if I can show you here. I did beef up the backside here where that... Uh, uh, you know, where that section I spliced in is located. I just took a small piece of round stock and I actually milled a flat in it so I could line it up to the flat on the back here, clamped it in place and then welded it in and ground it in so it kind of looks like it was uh, part of the thing in itself. You can get a better shot of it there. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I did. So you can't really tell it's there and I think, you know, whenever you weld on something like this, you're changing the metallurgy a little bit when it gets red and gets hot and cools down. So I figured why not just beef it up a little bit to be sure and that, that that's going to work out fine so you know i'm thinking to answer my question as to why honda would have put um, this show or made this so short in the first place um i think i answered that when i said earlier that uh when i read that uh facebook post the the poster said the extension the extending of this won't work with stock exhaust i bet you honda made it short because of the stock exhaust they just couldn't fit it any other way because it had to go here, certainly couldn't get cocked out. It has to be parallel with the frame. And if the stock exhaust will not allow it to be this length, I bet you they made the center, the side stain rather, to accommodate the stock exhaust, not necessarily the lean of the motorcycle when it's on the side stand. I bet you that's the answer. But we've corrected it. So good. I'm real happy with it. It came out great. All right, guys, so that's it on this job. In a really quick summary... Do you need to do it the way I did it in this job? No, probably not. This is the way I chose to do it. The reasons I pretty much illustrated throughout the video. You can probably just take the kickstand. Assuming there's no other correctable issue, like I said before, you can take the kickstand and split it. Uh, find a piece of bar stock, their appropriate uh, you know, diameter, uh, and then you just do some weld prep on it. Make sure it's lined up, tack it, and weld it around. It'll probably last forever. Um, or you could do it some other ways, like putting some round tubular, like thick tubular stock on the OD of the parent material from the two halves, uh, the two parts of the kickstand, and then stretch it that way. I didn't really like the idea of doing it either of those two ways, which is the reason why I did it the way I did. So we don't need to beat that dead horse. So I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned something. 
So if you liked the video, please let me know that you did. If you like this kind of content, I'll put some more of this content where I'm making shit and welding shit up. Um, if you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. I won't do it anymore, right? Either way, if you ring the bell and subscribe, you get notified when I put something else like this or anything up on the channel in the future. So I guess that's it. Don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.